Hey, if you watched the previous episode, you notice that we are starting our journey to learn mainframe, about mainframe. So now we are going to start on the first group of challenges, the PDSs, and we are going to talk about mainframe, about files in mainframe. And more correctly speaking, let's talk about data sets. So to understand better, uh, the files that we are handling on these bigger servers on mainframes, they are not residing close to the CPU, together with the CPU, the real memory. They are living outside of the box. So they are living in specific devices that are made to host your data. And the, the way we are writing, reading, data we are saving this data uh, these on the mainframes are the data sets on this first challenges we are going to handle PDSs we are being presented to them moving files across different data sets uploading files from our machines to the mainframe and running some jobs uh, to get this data merged and don't worry if you don't know what is a job we are going to see that on the JCLs so these PDSs, they, these are where we are going to save our data, we are going to write our code there, save our compiled programs. And when we create these data sets, there are some rules that we need to follow for their data set names. You probably noted that there are some dots in, this, in the name of these files, in the name of these data sets. So uh, this complete name has to be up to 44 characters and uh, we are splitting that in different, in, in more segments and what we call them as qualifiers. So each qualifier needs to have from one to eight characters. So let's look into this sample build.data.set. So here we have uh, our dataset name and the, the first qualifier, the first segment is what we call high-level qualifier. So bill here is our high-level qualifier. And the last one is the low-level qualifier. So our set for here, this is our last qualifier. These qualifiers, and also when we see the members, uh, it has to follow some rules also. So uh, it needs to be from one to eight uh, characters as we already saw. And the first character uh, needs to be alphabetical or national. So here are some examples about what, what would be these uh, characters. And then the next ones uh, from 2 to 7 to 8. So these ones, uh, we can also have numeric characters, we can also have iPhone. So these are some rules that we need to follow when we are naming them. There is another difference when we are talking about data sets, about uh, the way we are uh, recording the data here on the mainframe and also reading that. So usually in other platforms you have a stream of bytes and you have some bytes that identify uh, some breaks in there. But here on the mainframe we are storing that uh, in block of records and uh, there are some kind of formats that we can use and here are some uh, here uh, I have listed some of the, for the, the formats we can use. So the first one is the fixed format. And here you have run record, so this is the small uh, length, that you, the smallest unit you have uh, when we are talking about these records. So the record length and the block size is the same. So each block there is one record and you are bringing to the memory uh, one block with one record. So to get more uh, from this you may, you may want to use fixed block it, uh, format. And what that means is that, is that you have a block that contains more records with the same size. And when you want to access this data, the system is going to the disk, taking to the memory this block, and you have multiple records inside of it. And so this is the fixed block. The next one, the variable, uh, you have wrong record per block, and this has a variable format. So. Uh, to keep that, you need uh, first. Uh, you need to know how 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 long is this record, right? So this first word is to tell the system the size of this record, the size of this block. But on variable formats, you can also have a blocked uh, format. 
So verbal blocking. And in this case, you're gonna need another word uh, to be the descriptor for the whole block and for each record another uh, word that in the side of that record. So uh, the last one here is the undefined format. So that's mostly used it for compiled programs or when you have a library that's storing uh, your compiled programs. So you probably will be using that. You need to be using that. There are more types of datasets. Most, there are more common uh, types of TOS datasets. But here, in fact, uh, we are talking about the non descents And on other challenges, I believe, on level 3 you are going to touch some visions but let's focus on what we have right now so sequential data sets are a collection of records so when you find some sequential data set on the mainframe and you access that it's like you were accessing any other file on your main on your computer so it has this collection of records and there is also partitioned data sets that's a collection of these uh, members that are like uh, the sequentials so you have a collection of member and a member is a collection of records. So these are the PDSs that we are seeing here on this, uh, on this challenge. Well, uh, we had on the first week of Master the Mainframe over 1,000 of users accessing that. And how ZOS can handle that amount of files? Let's suppose uh, each user has a tons, thousands of data sets. Right, uh, ZOS uh, use uh, one kind of structure uh, to index these files. So we have MCAT, that is our main catalog where uh, the system is keeping the records like, oh, I, I want this sys one data set, where is it? So it tells the system where to find that. And also uh, has like an index for every user. So for example, for user A, uh, the data sets will be on this uh, the, will be listed on this UCAT user catalog. So uh, the system points the MCAT points to the UCAT and there there are the list of data sets the user has. So this is what we say that the data sets catalogued. If the data sets not catalogued, uh, you need to tell the system in which volume in which disk your data set is receiving. And this UCAT has, uh, has pointers for these disks and when we go to the disks, there are a lot of other data sets inside, right? Uh, one data set may be in one track, other in another, and you need to have a quick way to access that. So at the beginning of each of these volumes, there's another structure called a VTOC and virtual table of content and there you're going to be pointed to where and specifically inside of the disk where your data is. So let's take a look on the PDS challenges right now. But you have some uh, uh, a quite good knowledge about what you're gonna be seeing there. And let's take a look on the challenge. So first, let's work with the high-level qualifiers, see the attributes, save files to favorites. So here, when we search for a data set, we need to pass the high-level qualifiers we want to search. So let's look for our IDs, and this brings to us all the entries that we have in the catalog. Also, uh, when we look to the attributes here, we can see which catalog our data set is listed, uh, the record length, the block size. So these are some samples of attributes we can talk. So let's favorite them. This will make it easier for us to work here on so Explorer to find out data sets when we go here in favorites. So, uh, playing with favorites, uh, so let's change a bit the qualifiers and find some data sets. So, let's change here to MTM 2020. So, basically, uh, the files that we are going to use as SERS, they start like this. So, most of the challenges, uh, they will have the source for us to use to play with these high level qualifiers. This has, uh, these data sets are accessible from, for everyone. And we need to find uh, which one is on the volume ending on Z. So I will shoot here just for to be to be faster, and you people will learn more about the on level three. But don't worry for that. You can just go and look with right, right click, 
on the data sets and look into that there too. But that's the beauty of working here on the tech. I can just integrate that with other, there are no other bash commands. So let's work, let's look uh, to them 10, 10, 20 and the volume that we want to find. So that, oh, uh, let me just fix that. So grab. And that should be, yeah, there we go. So here we have the data set names and when we find the volume. So this is our data set of the public dot input. That's perfect. So this is the data set that contains uh the file that we are going to copy right now and look how simple is to explore you just have to right click copy and paste so as you would be working on any other platform on your machine so let me just uh bring the work here that i forgot to favorite and as you could see you can have multiple high level body files here to display the data sets that will bring to you all the high level qualifiers that you have included in the future. So we can take the work and now we'll figure that. So now I can crop it. So let's paste that. And when you paste, you need to type uh, the name of the data set. So if you want to keep the same, there you go. Refresh, you're gonna see the data set here. So let's copy also the PDS part 2. And basically this challenge will be uh, merging the, these two main bars using a job, JCL. Let's take the JCL that we should use, let's copy that also over there. So this PDS one to get. Let's go here. Paste that. To get just this page I want. Okay, perfect. Let, let's let's paste this. Let's change the name. PDS one to get. Oh, let me rename that. Okay, fix. There you go. So now it has the name that the challenge is asking us to keep. Yeah, there you go. So and we are on the final part of this challenge, so we'd like to run this job and check what this is done. So our file is already renamed, so let's remove that. So when we right click and submit job, it brings uh, to us this link, we click and we can see here on the job area our output. So our job has completed zero, let's take a look here if we see something. And yeah, everything looks good. If we go here, you're gonna see that this zero zero on return code that means something that we were expecting. Now, let's take a look here on the JCL. And if you have opened a file and it doesn't know that it's a JCL, just click here on the bottom of the page and type to change uh, the, the type of file so it will highlight for you. And we can look here on the JCL, don't, don't worry right now, but basically uh, this is a job, it has these cards and we're gonna see in details on the next videos, but for now it's taking these two files, the PDS1 and the PDS2 members, and we'll merge on this PDS out. So let's refresh, and there we go, here we have our file, and this is what we need to rename. So it just, is basically took the the first member and the second and merge it in a unique file and to finish this challenge let's just rename that for receipt and there we go you can practice now doing some tacos and uh, i will speed up the things here to get ready for the next challenges and i will let you uh, with uh, the pds challenge so do your best and let me know if you haven't done just come here on the comments and, and and ask whatever you want to ask whatever you want to see on the next videos hope you are enjoying that and give me a like subscribe to the channel and see you on next episode bye bye